diameter D1 typically would be 24 inch pipe. So you have to convert that to feet before you do this calculation because feet is the consistent unit. And in this case, the Q is 9.42 CFS. And using that discharge, I can then calculate the velocity at section 2. It's obvious. In this case, the pipe is as pipe size is bigger at section 2. From 2 feet in diameter, it's gone to 3 feet in diameter. So we already know what, what to expect. The velocity is going to go down, which is basically what has happened. V2 is 1.33 feet per second as opposed to 3 feet per second at section 1. Uh, once again, just to check, my Q is constant. I just calculate, recalculate Q2, which is V2 times A2. And notice that in this case, it's also equal to 9.42 CFS. So that's the equation of continuity in pipe flow situation. I have formulated a problem for you to go work it at home for an open channel system. Uh, let me briefly tell you what the differences will be between the two systems. If you keep in, mi keep in mind that the flow depth is what's normally given uh, in the case of an open channel system. It takes the pr uh, place of pressure head in, in a full pipe flow situation. Also, we have the velocity, average velocity, just like we had in the pipe system. We have it also in the open channel system, except that the average velocity is a little more difficult to define in the case of an open channel system. But for, for this part of the exam that you're taking, I would just leave it at that. Uh, it's typically it will be given to you, the average velocity. If not, keep in mind the average velocity can always be calculated using the uh, flow rate Q. So Q over the cross-sectional area will also give you the velocity from continuity equation. So in this case, uh, at section 1, I have a velocity of 4 meters per second, a depth of 4 meters. Now remember, V1 times A1 should give you really the Q. But in this case, the, or what I've given you is a rectangle channel with a flow depth of 4 meters. And the width of the rectangle channel is also given here. It's an 8 meters wide. So the flow area for a 4 meter depth would be 4 times. That's the depth times the width, which in this case 32 square meters. So therefore, you can take that area, multiply by velocity to get the total discharge. What I'm going to do is introduce a new variable called discharge per unit width. Just to illustrate to you that concept, it's normally for a rectangular channel, it's equal to the discharge per unit width. That's what that it tra translates into. So it's Q over capital Q over B. Capital Q, by the way, is the symbol we use for discharge or flow rate. Now, you all can go ahead and do this first part. Let's get, get an answer for that. For this particular problem, tell me what the discharge per unit width is in this channel. That should be fairly quick and easy to calculate. Somebody already came out with the answer, 16. Yes, so that is the correct answer. That's because how did we get that? We got the discharge Q divided by the unit width. Uh, 8 meters is the width. Notice what happens here. When I divide by the width, essentially the small Q can be obtained by taking the flow depth times the velocity directly in a rectangular channel. So Y1 is, in this case, 4 meters. V1 is 4 meters, so 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, So the units of small q are meter q per second per meter, or CFS per foot per foot. Okay, It's a commonly used uh, uh, discharge variable in open channel systems. The most important equation, of course, is the second equation that we'll review. This is called the Bernoulli equation, and or the, we often refer to as the energy equation. Uh, I want to emphasize this because in many, many problems, uh, dealing with pipe systems or open channel systems, uh, typically you see the application of this equation. Uh, all it is basically uh, says that total energy at any cross section or at any section of the pipe or the open channel is equal to sum of three terms. We one, the first term is called P over gamma. We often refer to as pressure head. Now notice the word I'm using head, and I'll explain that in a minute what that means. Uh, the second term is a potential energy term, or basically this is the energy the fluid possesses by virtue of its elevation above a datum. And then, of course, V squared over 2G is what we call the kinetic energy or velocity head. So basically the first two terms represent like potential energy and pressure energy together. And finally, uh, the last, third term represents the kinetic energy term. 
And of course, if there are any losses, we will have to abstract them or recognize that, minus head loss. And if you add any head to the fluid, like a pump or something, we always do plus HP. So the next two, those two terms, HL and HP, represent the head loss or slash head gain in a fluid. Uh, whatever it is, the whole thing must be a constant at that cross-section and must not change from section to section. Now, one of the things I would like to say is the word head. Head is measured in feet or meters. It represents essentially the energy at any cross-section in terms of feet or meters. Uh, the sum of the first two terms by the P or gamma plus Z, we often refer to as the hydraulic head. Uh, it's the pressure head plus the potential energy or elevation head summed together. Uh, that takes a lot of importance in water supply systems, as we'll see later on in one of the examples, uh, primarily because, as I will illustrate to you in a minute, the sum of these first two terms is more dominant than the third term, the kinetic energy term. Usually you'll find in many, many problems, V squared over 2G will be quite small. Um, anyway, these are all expressed, as I said, in feet or meters. And let's look at the next slide. I've got a small example also, not this slide, but the one following this. For an open channel system, I can define the same thing as I did for the pipe system. Uh, the total head at any point, or the total energy, if you want to call it, is Y instead of P or gamma. I substitute the flow depth, Y. And by the way, this is the vertical flow depth. I won't get into the debate about whether that is uh, accurate enough to use that. Uh, we're just going to use it for small so small slope channels. Uh, it's quite reasonable to assume the vertical flow depth represents the hydrostatic pressure at the bottom. Finally, Z, that's the elevation to the channel bottom. Remember that. And of course, V squared over 2G kinetic energy. Now, I do throw in a term here, a coefficient called alpha, which we often refer to as a kinetic energy correction factor. And that typical range of that coefficient, by the way, is between 1 to 1.3. If they don't give it to you, just assume 1. Okay. Why is it there? Well, it's, I won't get into the details of it in this discussion, but essentially, the moment you represented using average velocity in a cross-section in the channel, I always told you that the actual velocity cannot be the average velocity because of the fact that the velocity at the channel bottom, for example, must be zero. And as you go to the center of the channel, the velocity increases, reaches the maximum value. So it's a non-uniform distribution. But the fact is you're substituting or assuming a uniform velocity distribution across the entire cross-section. And the price you're going to pay there is, of course, that's not an arbitrary assumption, by the way. It assumes you do that assumption with the fact that the same flow volume is going through at both the cross-sections, uh, both the velocity distributions the actual and the average. But the kinetic energy transport is not the same because it's the sum of V squared over 2G. So in order to make the kinetic energy transported equal in both velocity distributions, we have to correct it through a coefficient called alpha. Okay? And for the sake of discussion here, uh, most of the time we neglect it. So it'll be one. So don't worry about it too much. But those are the three terms in the open channel system. <clears throat> now, all these head units or head terms in the Bernoulli equation, I told you represent energy, energy or power. And to really show that or to make, convert them into actual energy units, you have to use this equation. So try to memorize this or take it with you. Uh, very often, we always like to find out what that head means in the Bernoulli equation. Remember, we call it the energy equation. So this head H can be converted into work done or power by multiplying by Q, the flow rate, and the specific weight of the fluid gamma. Now, for those who are not familiar or forgotten specific weight, uh, it's basically gamma is the density of a fluid times G, rho times G. So in the case of US units, gamma of water is 62.4 pounds per feet cubed. Uh, in SI units, uh, gamma is 9806 newtons per meter cubed. And how I got that? Rho times G. You, you have to know one, at least the density of water to uh, get that value. For example, density of water in uh, US units is 1.96 slugs, 1.93 slugs per feet cubed. 
So you have to multiply that with G, which is 32.2, you'll get 62.4, OK, approximately. Uh, the gamma, of course, consistent unit in, U, in US unit is CFS. So keep the units, respect it. I've given you here all the units. In SI system, of course, the power comes out in newton meter per second, which is called joules per second or watts. Okay, and of course, Q will be in meter cube per second, and the head will be measured in meters. Uh, gamma. In my example here, let's uh, go through a small example. Let's say, for example, you have a pressure head P or gamma in the Bernoulli equation of 50 meters, which, by the way. Turns out, turns out to be 490 kilopascals of pressure. Uh, that's P over gamma. And Q is, in this case, 0.6 meter cube per second. Then the water, the water power, the amount of energy that that particular fluid possesses is obtained by using this formula gamma, Q, and H. So in this case, gamma is 9806, and Q is 0.6. And therefore, to multiply all these three quantities, you end up with 294,180 newton meter per second or joules per second. Remember, that's also called a watt, a W. That's the unit of power in a size system of units. Uh, as we know, kilowatt hour is quite a popular unit uh, in uh, many, many energy applications. And that's one hour of usage, by the way, when they say kilowatt hour. But kilowatt is 1,000 watts, is the unit of uh, power in the SI system. Uh, we do not have an abbreviated acronym in the US units. We just call it pound foot per second. There's also a unit called horsepower. Please try to get familiar with that. It's just a unit that's used to scale energy or power. Uh, for example, in the SI system, one horsepower represents 776 newton meter per second. So if you have energy in newton meter per second, uh, it's a, usually a large number. Convert that to horsepower by dividing it with 776. The one in the US unit is 550. Somebody has a question here. Uh, it says, what is 9806? Uh, what is the 9806? Well, that's gamma, specific weight of water. Remember I said in this equation you have gamma QH. Gamma is the specific weight of water, which is density times G, acceleration due to gravity. Okay, And for SI units, Gamma is equal to right density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times G, which is 9.806. So if you multiply the two, you'll get 9.806. Okay, and that's gamma water. You might want to memorize that if you don't know how to calculate it from density. Uh, the same thing in U.S. units was 62.4, if you remember, pounds per feet cubed. Okay. So you're probably more familiar with the US unit, but not the one in SI units. So this is gamma right here. Does that answer your question? I hope it does. OK. All right, moving on. Uh, here's another example I've set up for you to get yourself familiar with each of the units, each of the quantities in the Bernoulli equation. Let's kind of review these, because this is very important for some of the problems I'm going to do down the line. For example, here, uh, the flow is in a 24-inch pipe of 20 CFS. Uh, the pressure at a point is 60 PSI. Typically, that's how we measure pressure. It's also what we call a gauge pressure that is related to the atmospheric pressure. We do not use absolute pressures in fluid mechanics. Uh, gauge pressure is basically the relative pressure relative to the atmospheric pressure. So it's absolute minus the atmospheric. So anyway, 60 PSI is the pressure above the atmospheric pressure. It's positive. Uh, it's pounds per square inch. But the consistent unit of pressure is not PSI. It's PSF, pounds per square foot. So we have to convert that right away to PSF before you do anything with it. Typically, to do that conversion, we multiply by 144, as I'll show you in this example here. Uh, what I'm going to do here is to show you bring all these head units into one common unit called feet. So our pressure head, P over gamma, is 60 PSI of pressure multiplied by 144 converts that to PSF. You should do this and divide by the gamma of water again, which is 62.4. This example is in the US units. 
In SI units, you'll obviously have Pascal is the unit of pressure.